COVID-19 virus has affected the whole world, from presidents to greengrocers to teachers and sports stars. Nobody's safe. Former Premier League footballer Mark Fish is using his charity, the Mark Fish Foundation, to assist families in his South African homeland as they struggle to secure more than one meal a day during this crisis. I'm very, very fortunate that the last couple of years I have had the opportunity to do um, football for farm workers in all of the Mpopo province. And we do different um, districts. And then today it's uh, Roots Bay, which is Mopani uh, East. And uh, yeah, it's getting to know, well, I'm very fortunate getting to know the farming community, getting to know the farm workers themselves. Mark believes in the power of the ball as an effective tool in empowering the youth. Through his growing foundation, he's been officiating at organized matches in the South African rural communities, some between local farmers and others, youth tournaments that give the winning teams a chance to go on and compete at a higher level. We've seen some really talented players, but I'd say the highlight was last year where we had the finals, um, and from there we picked 24 of the best players. We took farm workers out of their comfort zone, we took them to the high performance center where they stayed in a hotel, um, ate like professionals, trained like professionals, and then played against Supersport, which was a fantastic experience for, for these guys. As well as raising morale through the football camps, Mark's also dropping food parcels at squatter camps to aid the people who've lost jobs and homes due to the pandemic. Mark Fish is giving something back to the country he serves so well on the football pitch. South African blood is in his veins, but when it came to football, it was England that whetted his appetite from a young age. There was fantastic players that uh, we watched on the, on the television, and uh, I think that's why I, not many people know about it, um, I don't always talk about it, but I grew up as a Man United fan. Fish grew up in Pretoria, and his footballing talents put him on the radar of local club Jomo Cosmos at a young age. He went on to win the national title with Orlando Pirates, and was part of the national team that won the Africa Cup of Nations on home soil in 1996. That sparked interest from Europe. The people representing me said no, they Man United are interested and, and Lazio. So we flew out and we met with Sir Alex Ferguson and he just said he would like me to stay for a couple of weeks to see how they, if I can adapt to them. And the, the people representing just said, well, we're going to Italy, we have an obligation to go to Lazio. But after just a year in Rome, Fish was on his travels once more. England and the Premier League came calling again. And this time he made the move stick. We had a, a game for South Africa against England at Old Trafford and at the time then there was the coach of Bolton which was Colin Todd. He, he saw me play for South Africa and he showed an interest uh, in me. Next minute I found myself signing for Bolton and, and moving to the English Premier League which was obviously a dream come true to play, play in England where you've watched the teams, a team that you used to support, you've watched them and now you have the opportunity to play against them. Well, Mark Fish, such a pillar of South Africa's World Cup qualification. It's pretty awesome to make your English Premier League debut against Manchester United. Fate would have it, and you know, played against United at the Reebok Stadium, and it was a, a fantastic result for us as Bolton, playing against you know, probably the biggest club in, in, in the UK, and it was a just a nice occasion to 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 be a nil-nil draw um, against the the giants of of Manchester and to do a, a good enough performance to make sure that the, the likes of Andy Cole and Sheringham who were on top form didn't score goals. For Colin Todd, he was a fantastic footballer. He played for Derby, so as a manager, we had some really good players. We played entertaining football. It was, it was enjoyable to play for him. Oh, here's Neil Cox. Oh, they scored! Thompson. Blake and Thompson again on the follow-up, what a goal by Alan Thompson. Oh, wonderful strike by Taylor. I think the English game suited me more. I think that uh, the Italian game was certainly more about possession and as a defender, they didn't really encourage you to be so attack-minded. But the English game, certainly, I think the, the pace of the game and the way the game was played, wanting to be attack-minded, I think it certainly suited me a lot, a lot better. And a goal from Fish! But the season didn't go well for Bolton. 
The pressure of returning to the top flight and playing in a new stadium seemed to get to the players. It ended in a final day showdown. Bolton were playing at Chelsea and had to match or better Everton's result against Coventry. Still to be decided who's going to be relegated to Division One next season. It's obviously a long time ago, and you, you know you're playing on the on the field. You, you've got to be 100% concentrating. You're playing at Stamford Bridge. You're playing Chelsea, and uh, you've got to make sure you match the result uh, uh, of your position at the time. Everton drew first blood and went one up against Coventry. And that's uh, the news coming through on the terraces of that Everton goal. Those Bolton fans won't want to hear that news. And you hear the mumbling amongst your fans, and then you think, okay, well, you don't think, but you. When the ball goes out, you think to yourself, well, you know, have they scored, haven't they? That's a lovely ball in towards Viali. Gianluca Viali could well have sent Bolton down. It's the emotions of, I'm sure, as a player playing the match, but as the fans as well, you know, they're watching their, their, their team that they support and urging them on to try and score a goal. And news coming through of a Coventry equaliser at Goodison. It's now Everton 1, Coventry 1, and Bolton are one goal away from staying up. Incredible. The fans don't really want to celebrate, or they do want to celebrate, or this and that. So you've, you're playing a football match, but at the back of your head, you're thinking, just are we doing enough? Xavi with half a clearance. Oh, how did they miss? Shalanza, if he'd put his head on that ball, could well have kept Bolton up. Can we not score a goal just to make sure that we put, try and put ourselves in a better position? And Chelsea have a free run on goal here. Jody Morris, it's all over. I'm sure it's a lot harder for the fans than actually the players on the field. Because as a player, you need to go out and make sure you get the result um, that is the best for you. And the final whistle has gone at Goodison. Everton are safe. And Bolton are relegated once again. After an 18-month spell in the second tier of English football, Fish made a return to the Premier League, this time with Charlton Athletic in South East London. Charlton had just been promoted to the Premiership. It certainly felt like a family club. The Valley is nice, when I say small stadium, a nice new stadium that they had built as well. Very compact. The players were very welcome. Very easy to, to play for a club like that. It was certainly a very warming um, reception from, from the fans. Alan Kirby, very tactically aware coach, knew how he wanted to play and certainly we, we prepared as a team to play against the opposition, certainly. It was an enjoyable time of my footballing career and I'm sure the outsiders would think that we overachieved one or two seasons, but um, it was a family club, the, the fans got behind us, uh, home and away, to have had the experience to actually be part of Charlton and have, have, have played at some of the biggest clubs, not only in the UK, but some of the biggest clubs in the world. Johansson again. Danger here for Manchester United. It's a goal. Mark Fish equalises for Charlton. That's obviously a, a fantastic moment. I think I got cramped in my leg and I was lying on the ground trying to celebrate and the, my teammates were jumping on top of me, but it was more, I was more worried about my hamstring and getting pulled than anything else. After a lone spell in the championship at Ipswich Town, Fish suffered a severe knee injury and retired in 2006. He played 205 games in England, scoring six goals. He also represented his nation 62 times. He attempted a comeback at boyhood club Jomo Cosmos a year later, but was unable to return to full fitness. It's now his charity work that keeps him busy. Very fortunate to have been at the right place at the right time and have the right people to spot me and give me the opportunity. So I don't want to say it was a dream come true because I never dreamt I would get to where I did, but very fortunate to um, have experienced it and very grateful that I did.